Did you know that there's a condition where a person starts to have problems with their memory or thinking that isn't dementia? It's called mild cognitive impairment or MCI. Whilst it affects millions of people, from my experience as a doctor working in dementia care, I find that it is poorly understood. I'm Dr. Donovan, and in this video, I'm going to help you better understand this really important condition. If you or someone that you love has become more forgetful, struggles to concentrate, or feels like their thinking just isn't quite as sharp as it used to be, then this video is for you. In this video, we'll explore what mild cognitive impairment is and how it differs from dementia, what symptoms to look out for and what might be causing them, how MCI is diagnosed, what can be done to live well with it, and finally, what we know about the chances of MCI progressing to dementia. So what exactly is mild cognitive impairment? Well, mild cognitive impairment, or MCI, is when a person develops problems with memory or thinking that are more noticeable than usual for their age. But importantly, these difficulties aren't severe enough to stop them managing everyday life. Now, to break down the term to make it simple to understand, mild means that although the symptoms may be troubling, the person is still able to manage themselves well and do most everyday activities. Cognitive roughly means thinking, but also includes the abilities to learn, remember, understand, pay attention, communicate, or process sensory information. And impairment means not working as well as expected for the person's age and background. Now, it is important to note that some mental abilities, such as memory and concentration, can become less reliable as a person gets older. This is normal, and this often becomes more noticeable around age 60 and older. It can be frustrating, but it rarely stops a person from doing normal everyday activities. However, some people feel that these changes happen more quickly and may become worried that something is wrong with them. If a person regularly has difficulty doing certain mental tasks they used to do very easily, it may be a sign that they have mild cognitive impairment. What is important to note is that MCI isn't the same as dementia. In fact, many people with MCI remain independent and stable for years. For some though, it's an early sign of a progressive brain condition like Alzheimer's disease. For others, it may actually be due to treatable issues such as a sleep disorder, medication side effects, or even low vitamin B12, and we'll discuss these in much more detail later on in this video. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, MCI is quite common. MCI actually becomes more likely with age, especially after 60. In fact, around one in four people in their early 80s are affected by this. So what are some potential symptoms of MCI? Well, the symptoms of MCI can vary from person to person, and they often develop slowly. People may notice changes in one or more of their thinking abilities. For example, memory and learning may become less reliable. Someone might forget recent conversations, appointments, or struggle to absorb new information. Others might find it harder to reason or solve problems. Even simple decisions might feel more confusing or effortful than before. Concentration may also slip. It might become more difficult to focus on a task, especially when there are distractions. And language problems can also appear, such as trouble finding the right word mid-sentence or losing the thread of a conversation. And for some, there is a loss of interest or motivation. Hobbies may feel less enjoyable. Some people also describe a sense of brain fog, a cloudy, hard to pin down mental fatigue. Now, these changes are more than just normal aging, but importantly, they don't yet stop someone from living independently. So at this point in the video, you might be wondering, how is MCI different from dementia? Well, that's a really important distinction. Dementia is always caused by a disease that progressively damages the brain and worsens over time. It also interferes with daily life, gradually making it harder to do daily activities like cooking, shopping, managing money, or communicating clearly. MCI, on the other hand, can have many causes, some of which are actually treatable or stable. Now, a person with MCI still functions well in day-to-day -day life, though they may be worried about their thinking. Whether or not MCI progresses depends partly on what is causing it, and sometimes that isn't clear at first, so we're going to take a look at this now. 
So in terms of causes of MCI, well, some causes of MCI are potentially reversible. These include sleep problems such as insomnia or sleep apnea, side effects of medications that affect alertness or memory, low blood pressure, depression, anxiety or long-term stress, hearing or vision loss, infections like long COVID or urinary tract infections, which you might know as water infections, and even nutritional deficiencies, commonly low vitamin B12 or thyroid issues, and importantly, heavy and long-term alcohol use. In other cases, MCI might be linked to chronic or long-term health conditions such as heart failure, epilepsy, or past strokes. And some people do develop MCI due to a progressive brain condition like Alzheimer's or Lewy body disease. In those cases, the symptoms usually get worse over time. So how is MCI diagnosed? Well, the first step is usually a visit to the GP or family medicine doctor. They're going to ask about the symptoms, review the medications and general health, and they might do a brief memory test, which I'll cover in more detail in another video. Now, blood tests can help to rule out treatable conditions that we discussed before, so things like vitamin deficiencies, like vitamin B12 or thyroid problems. And if needed, the GP may refer you to a memory clinic for a more detailed assessment depending on this initial assessment. Now at this more detailed assessment, this could involve a longer interview about how your symptoms are affecting your life, standardized, more detailed memory and thinking tests, and sometimes the person who is assessing you might request a brain scan to check for stroke or other structural changes in the brain. Now a diagnosis of MCI is made when thinking problems are clearly present, more than what is expected for age, but without significant interference in daily activities. Now, you might be wondering, can MCI get better? And the answer is potentially yes. And that is something that many people are relieved to hear. Now, to be specific, around four in 10 people with MCI do see some improvement. This is most likely when the cause is something treatable like depression, sleep problems, or the effects of medication. Now, even without medical treatment, some people recover after a stressful life event such as a bereavement or illness and others improve naturally over time. Now, importantly, recovery is more likely with support. This includes things like counseling or talking therapies, peer support groups, treating any underlying conditions or rehabilitation services such as occupational therapy. So if you're watching this video and you've recently received a diagnosis of MCI, please do seek the support that you need and deserve. Now, on the other hand, I'm often asked the question, does MCI always progress to dementia? And my response to this question is not always, but for some people it does. Now, I know this is not necessarily a satisfying response to get a direct answer, but every person is different. Now, again, to be objective, around one in seven people with MCI will develop dementia within one year. After five years, that number rises to about half. Now, the risk does depend on several factors, things like age, older adults do have a higher risk, type of symptoms, so memory problems do raise the risk more than if the person presents with, say, language or attention problems. If the person has other health conditions, particularly diabetes, high blood pressure, depression or frailty, these all do increase risk of progression to dementia and scan findings. Certain structural changes in the brain or biomarkers in spinal fluid may suggest progression to a dementia is more likely. But even with risk factors, progression isn't guaranteed. Some people remain stable for many years. And this is why I try to offer my patients hope and try to advise them on being present in the present moment. The saying, yesterday is gone, tomorrow has not yet come, we only have today, couldn't be more true. Now, talking of practical advice, if you or someone you care for is living with MCI, well, what can help? Well, there are many strategies that can make life easier and reduce stress. So some of my top tips are sticking to a consistent daily routine, keeping items like keys and wallets in the same familiar place within the household. It might be helpful to have a Dropbox, for example, using a diary, calendar, or phone reminders, labeling drawers and cupboards really clearly, setting alarms for medication times and using a checklist, minimizing distractions when concentrating, importantly, eating well, sleeping enough, staying active, and really importantly, staying socially connected. Memory clinics and support groups can also offer tools to help you adapt and stay independent. 
Now, in terms of driving and work, most people with MCI can still drive safely, but if symptoms do affect reaction times or judgment, you may need to notify the DVLA in England and Wales or the DVA in Northern Ireland. Typically, a driving assessment may be advised. If you're working, it's important that you talk to your employer. Many people continue working with small adjustments like reduced hours or some extra supervision if needed. Employment laws may offer protection if MCI is affecting your ability to work. So always talk with your employer and doctor about this. Finally, can you reduce your risk of MCI or stop it from getting worse? Well, the good answer is yes, and it's never too late to start. Some of my top tips are be physically active, eat a Mediterranean style diet, avoid smoking, drink alcohol only in moderation, and try to stay mentally and socially active. Really importantly, make sure that you manage other health conditions, particularly things like diabetes or high blood pressure. And even small changes can make a big difference when you add them all together and you do it consistently over time. So in conclusion, MCI is a condition where thinking or memory is affected more than would be expected for someone's age, but not severely enough to impact daily life. For many people, MCI stays stable or actually even improves, but for others, it may be an early sign of dementia. Either way, getting a diagnosis opens the door to support, monitoring, and where possible, treatment. If you're concerned about memory problems yourself or with a loved one, please don't wait. Speak to a GP and get assessed. And finally, if you want to learn more about this topic, I would recommend Alzheimer's Society, which has a great detailed and accessible guide to MCI symptoms and support. And if you're in the UK, NHS Inform, which has an MCI overview. This is a great trusted source for practical steps and care options in the UK. I've linked both of these resources, plus many more evidence-based resources in the description box of this video if you want to check them out in your spare time. Thanks for watching and if this video has helped you, please consider leaving a comment or sharing your experience. Your story could make a difference to someone else going through the same thing.